and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today is episode one of a very, very long series I'm making here on how to start your very own network Minecraft server. Now, we personally just started our very own network Minecraft server. The IP is play.breakdowncraft.com. It's awesome. We're starting out with one server and expanding over time. But with that, I've learned a ton about setting up a network server from everything from bungee cord to what we're talking about today, selecting a host. So this is a very, very long series and uh, step one is figuring out where you're going to host your server at and that is what we're going to be talking about today. Now one thing I will say is any and all of the links that are down below to a specific server host are affiliate links and what that means is if you go and purchase through those links then I do get a cut of whatever sale you make. It's no extra cost to you, but the company pays me for referring you to them. I just want to do full disclosure with that. Um, I personally use all of the companies that I'm going to be recommending today. I literally have servers at all three companies we're going to be talking about today. So yeah, that is something you can know that I've tested and tried them myself and am only recommending them because I think they are good and, and serve a purpose in some way. So first and foremost, I want to talk about game servers. Now game servers is who I recommend on like my 1.13 server tutorial. You can check it out at the eye. Uh, I don't know which side of the screen it's on, but check it out at the, at the top of the screen. They are an awesome server hosting company, but the thing is, they're not great for network servers, right? They're great for starting a vanilla server with you and your friends, or even a bucket or spigot server that you just want to share with a couple of friends that you have and, you know, play with them and things like that, but not really get into setting up a network server that could potentially have hundreds of players on it and things like that. Game servers is great for... A couple of friends, but it's not great for huge, massive network servers. And because of that, game servers is where we host our Let's Play server, which is just me and, you know, Patrick, the co-owner of The Breakdown. And we get on there and play and have fun with The Breakdown Craft Let's Play and all that stuff, but it's not going to be ideal for a network server. With that being said, what would I recommend for hosting your own network server? Well, there are actually two places. One of them I've worked very heavily on the channel with in the past, and one of them is brand spanking new to the channel, and uh, I've never talked about them before, and recently discovered them and have worked very closely with them recently and uh, the first one is Apex Minecraft hosting. So Apex is somebody that you guys, if you've been around the channel a while, know quite a bit about. I used to work with them quite a bit but then, you know, some things happened and I didn't like some of the moves they were making and I moved on and started working with game servers for like the servers that, you know, just are a few friends and stuff. But Apex is still a great place to host a network server on running Bungie Cord, which is what you're going to be running here and you can easily link servers together. You know, obviously you're going to have to have three Apex servers to get this up and running, but that's okay because, uh, you know, you're going to need three servers no matter where you're going to be going when you're starting a bungee cord network. So that is something that's great. Apex has great bungee cord support. They'll help you with it. They'll help you get it set up and all that stuff. That was uh, one of the places I looked when we were looking for a place to host play.breakdowncraft.com. But that isn't where we ended up going, right? Where we ended up going was Shockbyte. Shockbyte is a server hosting company that I have known about for a while. I'm pretty in-depth with that industry. So I've known they've existed. I've been seeing some of the moves they were making and I was like, I think these guys are up and coming. And uh, sure enough, now they're pretty cemented in as a great Minecraft server host. And so I contacted them, gave them a shot, and uh, everything's great and on the up and up over there. And that's where we're hosting play.breakdowncraft.com currently at this present time. Now, if you're starting out, that's what I would recommend doing. I would recommend going to one of these server hosts. If you're looking for a server with just you and your friends, Game Servers is going to be the one for you. They have very stable servers and they're spread out all across the country with tons of reach and things like that. So you can very easily get a server that's near your house and near where most of your players are going to be. And that is great, right? But they're not the best for setting up a network server. They don't give you as much control over your server as I would like to see with a network style server. It's fine for just bucket or just a single vanilla server, but whenever you're getting, you know, multiple networks or servers linked together, you need more control to that. So in that case, if you're looking to host a network server, when you're first starting out, go with somebody like Apex or Shockbyte. Both of them are great. I personally am using Shockbyte, and that's who we're using for our network server, but Apex is going to serve you quite well as well. Look at them, compare prices, do all that stuff, but both of them are absolutely great places to uh, look for getting a server. Now, here's the thing. If you're starting a big network, right, and you're thinking that you're going to have like 50 servers deployed and not even 50, say you're going to get to about 8 to 10 servers. Once you start hitting that point, it's probably best to look into a dedicated server. Now, there are plenty of places out there for dedicated servers, and I don't have experience with any of them. So I'm just going to link some in the description down below. I'm not going to give any reviews of them in this video, but there will be some dedicated server companies linked down below that you can check out. But I don't have any experience with them, and I don't feel comfortable telling you guys about somebody that I don't 
don't have any experience with. So I'm going to link them down below. They're not affiliate links, but go down there, check those out, and you can check them out yourself and look at reviews and see what you think. I don't know if any of those are really bad or really good, but I know that they're who a lot of people use for their network servers in this industry, right? So that is something I will, uh, you know, link down below, but I have no personal experience with them. However, if you're just getting started out in your network server, all you need to do is go with someone like ShopBite or Apex. And if you're just looking to host a server for you and one of your friends on Bucket Spigot or, you know, Vanilla or even a modded server, game service is going to be great for you and you can check them out down below as well. Everything I've mentioned here is linked down below. And yeah, I hope that helps figure out where you want to buy your server from. But let's talk about gigabytes, right? Let's talk about how much RAM you need. Well, the general rule of thumb is that for every 20 plugins you have, you need one gigabyte of RAM. Now, some ra plugins are a lot more RAM intensive, like plugins that map your entire server as users discover it and stuff. Those are going to be way more RAM intensive than something like, I don't know, a simple plugin that shows a hologram at your spawn or something, right? So the general rule of thumb though is for 20 plugins, you need about one gigabyte of RAM, right? So if you have 40 plugins, you'll need two gigabytes of RAM to run all those plugins. Now, what about players, right? Because you got to look at both sides of the spectrum. So you've got 20 plugins, so you're going to need one gigabyte of RAM for just your plugins. But let's say you expect to have about 40 players. Well, for every 20 players your server has, you need an additional gigabyte of RAM. So for a server, that's running 40 players, right, and 20 plugins, you're going to need around three gigabytes of RAM. But if you ask me, I would rather be safe than sorry. So whatever that number is, right, I would always up it by one. So if you plan to have 40 players and 20 plugins, that means you would need, yes, you guessed it, three gigabytes of RAM. But it's pretty safe to go ahead and up that to four gigabytes of RAM just to give yourself some leeway when it comes to how much RAM your server is using, right? It's also worth mentioning that Spigot is typically more performance enhanced than Bucket is. So I'd always recommend running a network server off of Bucket. We'll talk more about this later. That's basically what we're looking at there, guys. And um, yeah, that's that. So that's how much you can, RAM you need. That's how you can tell that. That's where I would recommend buying servers from. I've tested everyone that I recommended in this video uh, other than the dedicated servers. And I didn't talk about any of them in the video because I have no experience with them. I will be doing a follow-up with this once we reach the point at Breakdown Craft to be able to deploy a dedicated server. Once we reach that point, I will be doing an additional video in this series, probably at the end, uh, talking about dedicated servers. But for right now, that is what we have. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There is over 15 videos planned in this series. It is in-depth. I'm going to be doing everything from showing you how to set up certain plugins, to how to set up factions, to how to get your lobby up and running, to how to set up Bungie Cord. Everything is going to be covered here, guys. And I can't wait to bring you guys along. But nonetheless, guys, my name is Nick. This has been the Breakdown Tech, and I'm out, guys. Peace.